beautiful friends it's Amanda here and today I want to show you some of my Black Friday purchases I feel like when it comes to Black Friday sales I'm sort of a mixture between the two major types of shoppers we have the people who plan out their lists they have certain things that they want and they're waiting for that really good deal and then as soon as the Black Friday sales hit they go for it they know exactly what they want those are like the targeted list shoppers and then we have the people that just like kind of impulse buy, they see on Instagram the ad for the sale, they see something that's just like, oh, I could buy this now because Black Friday sales. So we've got the list shoppers, we've got the impulse shoppers. I am a little bit of both. I definitely had some purchases here that I was waiting for the sale to click checkout on the cart. And then I have a couple things that I wasn't really expecting to buy and just sort of happened in a Black Friday shopping frenzy. <laughs> Let's just address the elephant in the room. The fact that I am wearing lashes, which is something I really never do. I recently had to wear them in my look swap video that I did with my friend Angelica Neekvist. And she and I were talking more after that video was filmed and she was suggesting that I should try half lashes. And then a bunch of people in the comments were commiserating with me and telling me that they also struggle with false lash application and that they really liked the magnetic lashes. The comments plus my convo with Angie sort of pushed me to make a purchase from Glamnetic. Luckily now Black Friday sales last for like three weeks so you really have the last two weeks of November and the first whole week of December to get your Black Friday deals. And I did purchase two sets of half lashes as well as the felt tip magnetic liner from Glamnetic. I'm wearing a set today. This is my first time trying this. I will say this is much easier than applying with the lash glue. It still takes a little bit of finessing. I definitely still need some more practice. At the end of the day, this isn't a step that I'm gonna add to my daily makeup routine, but it's really fun to try something new. It's nice to have the option. So far, these are the fastest, easiest lashes I've ever, ever tried. So I'm happy with my purchase. I definitely would wear these again. Not on a daily, but I don't feel completely out of my depth when I'm using them. So I think that's nice. My other very unplanned impulse buy was from Ace Beauté. They dropped these two new palettes and I saw my friend Emma from Colourpop Cult posting about these. She does have a code so I'll list that in the description for you because I can't remember what it is. I think it's usually Beauty Cult but I'll double check and I'll list her code because she is definitely the reason why I purchased these. I saw her post about these and I was just really drawn in. The packaging is cute, but the colors are such a gorgeous mix of very saturated bright colors and some more grungy kind of jewel tone colors. So this green and blue one is called the Envy palette. I think that these mattes look way better in use on the eyelid than they look actually in the swatches. They do look a little bit uneven because this is a bit of a drier formula. So these are very easy to work with on the lids to layer and blend versus a more creamy kind of opaque matte. So these are actually better on the eye than they look on the swatches here and you know they're not the world's best mattes in my opinion but I do think these shimmer shades are really really nice shiny opaque and even metallic shades. I love a chartreuse so this shade right here is exactly why I purchased this palette and I really really like this emerald jewel green shade but no surprise to anyone, the Aura palette is my preferred. Yes, I matched my nails to this exact eyeshadow. This is really a color scheme that I just vibe with a lot. I love purples. I still have some of these murky, chartreuse olive type of colors. I'm actually wearing a color story very much like this, but it's not from this palette. <laughs> 
Same story here performance wise. I do think the shimmers are just grabbing my attention more than the matte shades are, but I like the variety of mattes here. And these are the type of matte shades that I gravitate towards more than the blues and greens that we saw in the Envy palette. Because there's such a wide variety of matte shades, you could get a ton of different kinds of looks here. You could do all gold, all red, you could do a more pink, a more purple, and of course any combination of those. So I really like the variety of matte shades in this palette. I do feel like overall the shimmers outperformed the mattes in both of these palettes. These are both really pretty. I can see these being nice travel palettes too. I always like to take a little dash of color with me whenever I travel, even if it's just a short little weekend trip. So I can see myself grabbing one of these and grabbing a neutral palette and being happy with that choice. So I think there's some great options in here. I haven't worn these yet, but overall I'm a fan of the brand. And I will say there's another Ace Beauté video coming soon because when I purchased these, I also purchased their mystery box. I love mystery boxes, especially for brands that I don't have a ton from the brand. And this definitely qualifies. So I will have a little mystery box video for you soon. Keep an eye out for that. We got the impulse buys out of the way. Now let's talk about the three purchases that I planned. I had three brands on my list that I knew I wanted to shop from their Black Friday sales. The first being Adept Cosmetics. I've had my eye on both of these palettes for a really long time and Adept is really expensive, but I gotta tell you, everything about my experience is really great top to bottom. Speaking purely as a customer, I purchased these several years ago. They sent me some single shadows in PR, but I don't really, I don't have an affiliate code with them. And I gotta say, I am very, very happy with my entire buying experience. Checkout was super smooth. I feel like I got a good deal. Shipping was fast. The way that these were packed, they were so secure. Each palette comes in a box like this. The palettes in here with this foam piece on top, with the cardboard piece on top, then this box is closed up, then this box was wrapped in bubble wrap. It was the most secure shipping. I know that probably seems really, really extra and maybe it doesn't seem that environmentally friendly because it is a lot of extra packaging, but these are very expensive. <laughs> these shadows are very expensive. For me as a consumer, they're expensive. Uh, certainly to produce them with this super high-end feeling packaging, with the really high-end performing formulas, I'm certain that it's just as expensive for them to replace things. So I feel like you either pay for it on the front end or the back end with palettes getting scrapped or you package them and make sure that it gets there in one piece. Overall, really impressed with the whole experience. And then when you actually touch these shades, they feel so good. <laughs> it's crazy. I swatched the Aura and Envy palettes, the ones I just showed you, and then I swatched these and it was like a different realm of existence. I got the Heather Austin palette, which I've had on my want list for a really long time. Love the packaging as well. The Heather Austin palette has absolutely beautiful swatches. These shades do tend to be a little bit more warm tone neutral leaning versus the Ninhydrin palette that I also purchased. So I really like using both of these together so that I can get a really great variety. I do think that these matte shades are just exceptional. You can tell they're a lot more even, a lot more opaque than the last palettes we saw swatched and these are absolutely a dream to work with on the eyes. They blend so incredibly perfectly. And then this Ninhydrin palette, sorry if I mispronounced that. This is like a green and purple dream, which my dreams are green and purple. I don't know if you can sense a theme here. The colors in this palette just really captured my heart. I love these greens mixed with a wide variety of purples. I am missing a little bit more of these gorgeous buttery matte shades. I really wish that we had 
a deep bluish royal purple matte in here and then maybe a brighter green or like a emerald green matte that would make this absolutely the perfect mix of shades colors finishes for me but the mattes from the Heather Austin palette rounded out what I needed for some beautiful looks. These swatch so beautifully. I used both of these palettes combined for my eye look that I'm wearing today. I absolutely love these. I'm so, so happy that I purchased them. Frankly, I feel like even if I had paid full price for these, it would have been worth it. So I just feel like I got such a great deal because I did get these during a Black Friday sale. As far as quality and just making an impression, this is the best purchase that I made. I like a lot of the other stuff. I'm happy with all of my purchases, but this is the best purchase that I made. I just, ooh, I just wish I had a couple more mattes in this one. There's only two mattes in here, so if I had like two more mattes, it would be perfect. That's why I used these together because I really like the mattes in the Heather Austin palette. So I hate to spoil it, but this was the best purchase for me. First, I'm just gonna prime my lids with my favorite primer. It's the Party Proof Primer from ColourPop. And I'm gonna be combining both the Heather Austin and Ninhydrin palettes. I'm using the mattes from the Heather Austin palette and then I'm gonna grab some shimmers from the Ninhydrin palette. That way I can really showcase how well these two work together. I'm blending some warm tones into the crease area of my eye and then I'm adding this deep berry matte shade on the outer half of my eye and blending that up into the outer crease area as well. These shades layer so nicely together that it makes it quite easy to get a really beautiful seamless blend with these matte shades. I'm adding a little bit of those mattes to the lower lash line as well. Not too much, just a little bit of a blended out shade down there to give the look a little bit of balance. Then I'm going in with this golden peach shade. This has a beautiful duochrome peachy gold flip and I'm filling in the rest of my lid with that shade. Then I'm gonna take this warm purple tone and use that to blend the golden duochrome into the outer matte part of the lid. And then I just deepened up that darker matte shade on the outer part of the lid. Struggled for just a little bit to put these magnetic lashes on, although I have to say, the first time that I tried lashes in ages was my video with Angie and it really took me probably half an hour to just apply a couple little false lashes individually to my lash line with glue and this magnetic lash I got both of these eyes done in probably 15 minutes which I feel like is pretty darn good. It's good for me anyway. Let's switch gears for a second and move away from eyeshadow palettes. There's a lot of eyeshadow palettes. I like eyeshadow palettes, but I did make a purchase from Alamar Cosmetics and none of these are eyeshadow palettes. So we did mix it up just a little bit. I picked up two of their lip glosses. These are the Desnudas lip glosses. I got the shades Dulce and Coqueta. I also picked up some cheek products. I got one of their highlighters. This is the La Costa Sun Soaked High Shine Highlighter. This is so pretty. This feels incredible. Just touching this, it's so silky and it just is delicious. And then we have this Colorette Blush Trio. I got the shade Fair Light. I did wanna give you a quick swatch of all of these products, but you're actually gonna to get to see pretty much all of these in action anyway, because I did try on both glosses. I first went for this lighter one called Dulce, and I think it's just the shade isn't quite right for me, and this is a very thick, very sticky gloss. So no matter what I did, it just did not look good on me at all. The shade Coqueta was definitely better, I don't know if there's a formula difference. I don't know if I just got a weird one, but I'm not really a fan of these thicker, stickier glosses anyway. So I think those just aren't for me. I did try to use the shade 
Romantica first, but I ended up mixing it with the darker pinky peach shade to just give a little bit more pigmentation on the cheeks. Of course, had to add a little bit of highlighter as well, and this is probably my single favorite item that I purchased from Alamar because it's just so smooth and silky and beautiful. I would pick this up in a deeper shade. I really, really like the texture of these blushes. Again, they're just silky smooth. They feel so beautiful. They apply and blend beautifully. I do like a little bit more punch in my blush. I think I would like a little bit more color. But when it comes to performance, super pretty. I like the packaging. Everything's cute. It feels fun. It feels fresh. It makes me feel happy and like I'm going on vacation when I use these products. And I like that. I like that feeling. Ironically, the last thing that I'm going to talk about in this video is the first thing that I ordered and it's this Jet Setter Vault from Nomad Cosmetics. I was inspired to purchase this actually because of so many recommendations that I got from my ranking on my Nomad palettes video. And two of the palettes in here came highly, highly recommended. These are already bundled for a discount and then I could get a discount on the discounted bundle. I really felt like I was getting an incredible deal. Over the last year or two, I've become a huge fan of the Nomad brand. I really wanted to try some more of their palettes and just expand my collection. These two palettes were highly, highly recommended in the comments of my Ranking My Nomad Palettes video. Talking about the America's Parks palette and the Fire and Ice palette. The other two palettes in the set, I do feel kind of take it or leave it towards them. I love the inspo. I love the cover art for this Cartagena palette. It's magical realism. It's Colombia. It's warm and spicy. I really like the inspo. Just the shadows didn't really do that much for me. I didn't feel like there was enough contrast. And then this Tokyo Harajuku palette. It's just not really my style. It's very pastel. It's very sheer toppers. And look, the cover art's super cute. I really like the idea for both of these palettes. They're just not the right fit for me. So that's not to say that they're not good. They're just not my favorites. This Tokyo palette is, is really cute. I'm sure there are tons of people who love this. And I think if I mixed this in with another palette that had a little bit more punch, I feel like it would be beautiful. It would be high performing. It's just not really my personal preference for types of eyeshadows. And as far as this Mahika palette goes, it's really pretty. It has the intensity I'm looking for. I like the balance of mattes and shimmers, but it just doesn't quite have enough contrast. I wish there was something a little bit deeper happening. This is actually a palette I would love to do my version of in a BYOP. Let me know if you'd be interested in that because I'm inspired by this. These color stories fit my vibe more when it comes down to the actual shadows. I would prefer the Fire and Ice. I see why this got so much hype. This is definitely a really cool, really different palette and it's very quintessential Nomad Cosmetics. I'm not even really that interested in blue shades, although blues have been slowly growing on me. I think as my love for green blossomed, blue's kind of been waiting in the wings, but I love the mix of warm tones, greens, a little bit of neutral. I think this is just so well done. It's definitely inspiring, interesting. I get it. I get the hype around this palette. And I also love the color story here. I do think these colors and formulas just aren't quite as punchy as the Fire and Ice palette. The shimmers in particular are just not quite as intensely metallic, but I really like this mix of neutrals and very natural jewel tone type of colors. This is definitely in my color wheelhouse for sure. Overall, very happy with the purchase. I'm leaning more towards this half of the set than this half, but I'm happy to have these and I feel like they're really filling out my Nomad palette collection for sure. I'm really excited about all of my purchases. Some I'm more drawn in by than others, but overall I feel like I got some great stuff here. I'm really excited to explore more from these indie brands. I have a good balance here between things that are 
going to be instant loves, things that really, really fit what I already know I love. But that's mixed in with trying some new things, trying some new techniques, exploring more of brands that I just haven't really gotten that deep into. I do have one more Black Friday order that actually just arrived as I was preparing for this video. It's an order from Sigma, so I will be trying that stuff out soon. I have the Ace Butte Mystery Box to try out. And I would also love to know if you want to see more of any of these products that I didn't get a chance to try on and actually show in action during this video. I only have so many eyelids so I can't try every single palette and I did go a little ham on eyeshadow palettes. So let me know if you want to see more in-depth videos, swatch and comparisons, more eye looks, that type of thing from any of these other palettes that you saw featured in my Black Friday haul. I always love to hear what you think about things too so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. I feel so weird wearing lashes. These were really easy to put on though compared to using glue. It's not as easy as the commercials make it look, but still pretty easy. And I'm very bad at it, so. There has to be something intelligent I can say. I just haven't thought of it yet. <laughs> great, doing great. I take, I, mm, that didn't make sense. So that's cool, I don't know. Still talking, okay. Don't act like you're not impressed. Ulta take notes about how to ship stuff without it breaking. I cannot stop staring at my shiny, shiny eyelids. Like I don't even care that I have lashes on because my eyeshadow is so pretty. I almost wish I didn't have them on so you could see more of the eyeshadow. Let's switch, switch to that. what? <laughs> I'm not saying eat it, I'm just saying if you feel compelled to like lick it a little bit, then I understand. Sorry if that sounds weird. If you don't understand, you just don't understand and that's fine. <laughs> I feel like this could pop off at any second. Is it supposed to feel like that? Is that normal? I don't know how it's supposed to feel. I think I'm getting more used to seeing myself with lashes. It does still feel very foreign. I don't think it looks bad, it's just different, you know, it takes a while to get used to things. I think that's why some people have trouble doing looks without lashes because they're so used to seeing themselves only with them, with makeup on. And I don't think either one is better or worse, it's just the way that we are as humans. I text Angie a selfie of me wearing these so we'll see what she has to say. Does anybody else schedule their meltdowns? Like you're just so stressed and overwhelmed but you don't really have time to have a meltdown so you're like okay I can do it after 8 p.m. tonight or tomorrow between 12 and 1 30. <laughs> My sister and I were just talking about that like I don't have time to melt down now but I'm definitely gonna do it later. <laughs> <sighs> Don't worry, I'll talk to my therapist about this, it'll be fine. I really want my cheeks to be more blushy, more flushy, more juicy. I'm gonna try to add some more to it. See if I can get a little bit, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's better, that's a little flushier, blushier. Okay, I got more stuff to film. Thanks for hanging out, thanks for being cool. Thanks for listening to my rambles. Thanks for letting me swatch shiny, shiny things for you. That's my favorite. And just thanks for all your support and thanks for your nice comments and thanks for watching to the end and thanks for being so cool and cute and awesome. And you know what? You know what? You know what I'm gonna say? I love your face. I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.